Hey, it's cool here. If you don't know, and it is time to start up a brand new long run. This one in particular is a request from Mazzy, um, which also uh, actually come to think of it, Foos, I don't think is here. So let me let me uh, poke let me poke Foos here because Foos is the reason why we're playing this, even though Mazzy technically um requested this uh i don't know if it's, fit, if it's because foos didn't have the points or anyway it doesn't matter foos gifted me the game so there you go we can definitely blame foos for us playing this game anyway uh it is the longest journey uh which i will be playing in scum vm i did check and it has a compatibility rating of good uh which means it I should be able to complete it from end to end. There may be some glitches. It may not quite look right. Um, but it was either run it through Scum VM or run it or try to run it natively, which a graphical game from 1999 is probably not going to run that well. Uh, just running natively in Windows. I did try to and it runs in a 640 by 480 exclusive full screen window and it is pixelated up the wazoo and just it would have been a pain in the butt to try to get working correctly. Let's boot it up. And it might look a little weird to start with because I'm going to have to resize the window, but. Uh... So this is a game by Funcom. Let me just adjust this a little bit here. Uh, from 1999. Um, I think at this point, Funcom had done a couple of notable things. It ported a couple of games to Mega CD, Fatal Fury Special, and Samurai Showdown. Uh, they've done Disney's Pocahontas. Uh, for the Mega Drive specifically. Um, and I think this is their second Windows game, if I'm reading this right, with the first one being Dragonheart, Fire, and Steel. Uh, weirdly enough, they're still around. They've made about 14 MMORPGs, uh, including a couple for Age of Conan. Uh, they've done Anarchy Online, The Secret World, uh, Pets vs. Monsters, Lego minifigures on, uh, online, and an upcoming one called Dune Awakening. Um, so yeah, they're still around, so... But, uh, that being said, I'm not very familiar with the works of Funcom, especially not going back this, you know, this far back. Um, I've also been advised that some of the puzzles in this game um, might be a little rough to solve, so uh, we'll see how that goes. Let us uh, begin the journey. So, you've come to hear me tell a story, have you? If you please, we would love to hear one of your stories. You have seen so much. You have lived so long. Oh, <laughs> so good of you to remind me of my age, child. No, don't worry. I am an old woman, but I've lived a long and fulfilling life, and I do have stories to tell. Which story would you like to hear? A true one. A true story. All my stories are true, child. There are enough fairy tales in the worlds already. There's no need for me to make up more, believe me. Tell us the story of the balance, then. Oh, <laughs> you want the story of the balance? Oh, that's a long story, child. And not one I'd venture to tell at this hour. But perhaps I could tell you a story that I heard a long time ago. A 
a story that became a crucial turning point in the history of the balance. And that set in motion wheels that to this day are still turning. Please, yes, that does sound like a story we'd like to hear. Very well. This story, like all good stories, begins where it ends. In a tower. In a realm that is no more. Oh, that 1999 3D. Wow. Also, as everyone knows, the best stories starting and ending in a tower in a realm that is no... How, how many stories do y'all know uh, fit those criteria? <laughs> I don't know if my uh, overlay caught that, but uh, thank you for the reset, dear. Ragnar Tor Torinvist. The overlay doesn't work, unfortunately. Well, that's... I do not have a good solution for that because I'm using stream elements. If I was using my own, then I would be more worried. Hi. The second game I play on this channel that has something to do with the uh, Ouroboros. Guessing this is our character. Mind control. Oh no. Don't tell me I'm dreaming again. You know, for once, just once. It would be nice to have a decent night's sleep without waking up screaming from a bad dream at 4 a.m. You're not wrong. Okay, we're in control now. What's happening? Well, we have our first objective, everyone. Oh, perfect. I guess if I don't do something to save that egg, I'll suffer seven years of bad karma or something. Is that how it works? Did that sound come from the egg? Boy, that's some chick. I mean, I don't think this is a, is a chicken I don't egg. think I can get a good grip on it. It's too big and slippery and I might drop it by accident. Okay, that's valid. Uh, how about this root? Lucky thing the egg got caught between those roots. It's a long way down. And what else can we twig? Oh. 
Oh dear. Oh, the suffering we must endure. <gasps> what? Why do you take such pleasure in torturing us? Oh crap, torturing it's an end. You? Who are you? We are the voice of all trees, the spirit of wood and leaf. You're a talking tree? No, a tree does not talk. At least not in your tongue. The tongue of trees is the language of wood, root, and leaf. Who are you then? Like we said, we are the voice of all trees. Whenever an injustice is done, we must speak for the tree if we are present. It's the branch. I shouldn't have broken the branch off. Oh, what does it matter anyway? There is nothing more to be done for us. We are simply here to provide comfort in the final passing to Earth. We? I only see one of you. We are one with our host, as we are all one spirit, but Legion. Yeah, uh, thanks for clearing that up. We do not expect you to understand. You are human. Uh... What happened to the tree? What happened to the tree? Oh, the pain. As the battle raged, we... Battle? Between the mother and black chaos. She was only protecting her child, but it would not back down. And the force of their battle shook the mountain. Is this Final Fantasy XIV? The brook that fed us was led astray, and without water, we began to wither and die. What's the deal with the egg? Egg? What egg? Oh, of course, the child. Whenever the mother was absent, we were entrusted with the safety of the child. But now, withered and without strength, we can do nothing to help. We have failed the mother, and we despair. Our shame knows no bounds. Who are you again? We are the woods. Good dead. talk. We come to all trees in the hour of great need to provide comfort and aid in the passing to earth, and to give a voice to those who suffer. Our time is running out as we speak. The passing to earth is about to begin. Leave us now. What about the egg? Oh, it is too late. Without sustenance, we do not have the strength to bring it safely home. We have failed. And the earth will know our shame for all time to come. Are you always this glum? We are here because it is too late. The passing has begun. Leave us. Please. Isn't there anything I can do to help? Oh, we do not expect a human to come to our aid. Lose the attitude, okay? Just tell me if there's anything I can do. It is futile. We need water, but there is none. Not after the brook changed course. I'll find a way. Don't panic. We do not panic. Unlike you, we accept our destiny. If, however, against all odds, you do succeed, we will carry the child safely back into its nest. Do not make a foolish attempt on your own. It would spell certain misery. Certain misery, but not death. Mind control? Yes. I do wish that the game was a little more obvious about when you're in control. But there's water right here. Well, I guess a tree can't really Fresh move mountain water. water. Back in the real world, they'd probably charge 15 bucks a bottle for this. Sounds like a, a good money opportunity right here. Uh, use the branch? How do I use?
That seemed to be the right idea. But now what? Fresh mountain water. Yeah. According to the, um, spirit, there was some kind of battle that split the rock and changed the course of the stream. Okay. I'm an artist, not a botanist, but I'm pretty certain this tree is dead. Or close to it. Yeah, unfortunately there's going to be some pixel ending sometimes. I don't know if I'm specifically looking for something on this screen though, or on this screen, or on where I came from, the edge of the cliff. What about this nest? This is interesting. I've never seen a scale this size before. I'll keep it as a souvenir. As a souvenir, okay. Also, her name is April. I'm in my undies. That's so not appropriate. I'm sure it's fine. You're not naked, at least. I'm not entirely certain what grand purpose this is supposed to serve, but it sure looks like I know what I'm doing. I mean, you're not wrong. Also, I feel like the scale might be able to put this here. This should do the trick. There we go. We did it, everyone. We've revived the Genesis. Holy crap, what is that? I don't remember the Genesis trees having faces. Talk about instant rehab. Hello? Hello? Leave us be. Are you okay? We find our strength returned, and so we have no time for idle conversation. We must drink and rejoice. We can drink Aren't and talk at the same time. Are we forgetting something? Hush, listen. The song of ancient wood. Is it not sweet? Sweet, definitely. Yeah, the baby's probably ready to boogie down as well. The baby. Oh, the egg. Thank the earth. We almost forgot. How does an, an immortal being forget uh -oh. about things? Oh, dear. Oh, okay. We good. The baby, it's safe. <laughs> I saved you. Go away. Tree is best character. Oh dear. What was that? Uh-oh. Hi. It is you. You have come. You know me? April. Daughter. I have been waiting for you. Wait, what? Waiting? Why? Because it begins here with you, as it always has. What do you mean? The breach and the mending, the pain and the joy, the end of the old and the dawn of the new. A different world. I am the mother of what is, but you, you are the mother of a future that may yet be. How will I know? How will I know what to do? I will guide you. And I will protect you as much as I can. But in the end, you are on your own. I'm afraid. You always were, my child, my daughter. 
You're always afraid. Now it's, stop it's being probably afraid. Probably not a good thing. Good game, everyone. Fortunately, what that was a nightmare. Great. I'm completely exhausted. I must have been tossing and turning all night. It's so hot in here, too. No wonder I keep having these weird dreams. I've basically been simmering in my own sweat every night this past week. Doesn't look like it's going to cool down anytime soon, either. It's another sunny day in Newport. So is this happening in, like, the current day? Because, like... Well, it's a good thing the studio's got proper air conditioning. I promised myself I was going to spend most of the day working, and I don't intend to break that promise. Not this time. That's my desk, so, theoretically, that's where I'm supposed to do my work. I think my muse has departed me for greener pastures, though, because lately, inspiration's been fleeting at best. Your get up and go, got up and left? Yeah, I know all about that. It's just a chair. Got a lot of things to say about the desk, but the chair is just a chair. Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar. Let's get dressed. All right, so my wardrobe's sort of chic deficient, but I can't afford to be cutting edge. Useful, practical, and cheap is my shopping mantra. I mean, that's not a bad when thing. When fame and wealth come knocking, I'll buy a wardrobe the size of an ocean liner and fill it with clothes for a million bucks. Right now, I'll try to focus on my work. Okay, so we got the toy monkey. What's this? Cash card? Okay. Constable Guybrush is a strange hybrid between man, ape, and musician. In addition to being an officer of the law, of course. What? A good, cool story, bro. Okay, so, so this toy monkey is a cop. Great. My cash card at the moment is really quite useless. There can't be more than a dollar or two left in it. That's capitalism. I could only carry one suitcase with me when I left home. There was so much I would have loved to bring, but c'est la vie. At least it was a clean break with my past. I guess when all my hard work starts paying off, I'll get a house and fill it with all kinds of new junk. The past, who needs it? I have played this here. It's a bunch of drawings I drew when I was a kid. I don't even know why I brought them here. They mean absolutely nothing to me. And yeah, I did. I definitely did catch that name, Guybrush. Um. So I guess we're not getting dressed. I don't know. I'm part of the should be reading more, but life's too short generation. We embrace our illiteracy. The last book I read was. How to Seduce the Man of Your Dreams. Now, if I can just find a man to dream about, I'll be all set. Get it. Them's the jokes, folks. Shelves. Good talk. Um, I don't need to make my bed. It's been too hot to sleep with a cover. Oh, I definitely feel that. It's been too hot to sleep with a cover. So I don't. Yeah, you just said that, thanks. I'm not good at taking care of living things, but this plant's doing just fine despite months of neglect. Doing your puzzle slash adventure awakening. I imagine we're at the same time that you would have uh, played um, uh, the, the, the journeyman.
Hey, are we... Are we in Italy? Like, we... We're in Newport, but where is Newport? Alexander, I watched the exact same video. Um... It's a rusty old grill, kept afloat by a rubber ducky. It's a rubber ducky, helplessly trapped under that rusty old grill. Good talk. Um, I imagine we're gonna have to do something. Also, that's not a rubber ducky. That's like, uh, like, uh, I forget what you, talk, what you call that. Wait, it's that game? Oh no. I still haven't figured out what runs through the canals in Venice, but I'm oh, sure it Venice. can't be water. I still haven't figured I still haven't figured yeah, out thanks. what runs through the canals. It's a seagull. The poor guy looks quite hungry. I feel like we have a lot of uh of uh puzzle pieces coming together here. That puzzle will take me a few hours. <laughs> Good. I'm, I'm glad. That fan is supposed to keep the room nice and cool in the summer. Sure. Yeah. It's at least, oh, one quarter of a degree cooler in here when it's on. That's my work. It's supposed to be a portrait of my life study teacher. But I think he might disagree. It's fine. It's, it's 1999. I had to borrow some posters from the cafe, because I just can't afford to buy any of my own. When I think about it, that's so depressing. So, I, I get the, um, I get the distinct impression that April here is, um, not exactly living her best life. Newport, Venice, Italy. I'd better head over to the studio to do some work. Only two weeks until the big show opens, and my contribution is in serious need of attention. Might be a good idea to get dressed first, though. I mean, that's what I was trying to do. That is why I opened the closet. Why did you not take clothes out? Hey, babe. Babe, you're looking real sexy today. Zach, listen, I I've got to run... And what's going on, April? How you been? <laughs> yeah, the, this uh, this pretty much sums up my immediate impression of Zach here. I was doing just fine until you came along. What's that? Uh, hey, uh, listen, I was thinking maybe you and I could hook up tonight, go to the pavilion or something. We could pop a few raptures, do a little close dancing. How about it? No. No, that's not gonna work, Zack. What? You got something against me, babe? Do I offend you in some way? Oh, no. I just don't think it's a good idea for us to be... together like that. Hey, whatever. You come crawling back when you realize your mistake, babe. I'm out of here. I feel like the mistake was talking to you at all. What an asshole. Yeah. Free access terminal. It's a fact, as in F A C T. Free access terminal. Computer. Voice interface is not installed. Please use the touchscreen interface to communicate with this free access terminal. Oh, okay. Why not consider a very reasonable upgrade? In addition to a voice interface, True Holo display technology and Instacredit compatibility. No, I'll just use my hands, thanks. You are missing out on a great opportunity. Oh my goodness. If you upgrade now, the capitalism is real. You understood that. You have a voice interface installed already. Why would I pay to have another one installed? Current voice interface is for sales purposes only. If you take advantage uh, of this very affordable upgrade today... No, really. You... This terminal doesn't belong to me. Noted. Please refrain from voice communication in the future, or you will be reported to the fact FUB and charged for processing time. 
F-U-B? Fair Use Bureau. They are authorized to carry deadly arms. Well, whatever. Sorry. What, what just happened? Where am I? <laughs> Why am I here? Also, hey, Foos. Um, so yeah, even this terminal is just the worst. I'd rather go talk to this plant. What can you tell me about Charlie's Charlie? apartment? His place is twice as big as mine, with a private bathroom. And a huge bed. I guess he likes his creature comforts. I hope he's less of a jerk than Zack. What about this plant? Organic plastic. It grows, and it converts carbon dioxide into oxygen. Just like real plants, but it doesn't need nourishment of any kind. Convenient, but disturbing. <laughs> you remember some of the lines, Zero? <laughs> Uh, April's alright. Um, I immediately hate Zack, and I have not seen Charlie yet, so... Uh, I will reserve my judgment on Charlie. Um... Another... Oh, there we go, downstairs. Yeah, th this is a very, um, a very 2000-ish game. You know, 1999, same kind of era, basically. You consider it keep the voice down after 11 p.m. Okay. Annual summer blowout at the Fringe Cafe, Friday, August 4th, 8 p.m. Free food, live performances by Royne Dale, Harlequin Masquerade, The Go-Getters. Tickets available at the bar, $10 only, spread the word. Pizza and movie night, Monday, July 31st, BYOS. BYO what? Soap? Yes, bring your own soap. You, you will require the soap. When you need it, you'll know. I'm sorry, but big sweaty jocks do not turn me on. I'll take a nerd any day. Hey, baby, what's happening? Uh, actually, no, let's not start talking like Zach. Uh, pink note. I can't tell what that note's saying as long as it's up there. Fiona's handwriting is not particularly legible. Let's grab that then. Also the thumbtack, or push pin, I guess is also. Oop. It's a also leaf of organic a... plastic. It grows. It converts okay. carbon dioxide. It's a same. push pin. Found a gold ring under the common room sofa. If it's yours, let me know. But no false claims, please. Fiona. I did lose a gold ring a few weeks ago. I hope this is the one. I'll have to ask Fiona about it. Alright. Also, hey Ricky, how's it going? Uh, let's know this is just part of the jock here. Common room, duty roster, July 27th, April and Emma. Oh joy, manual labor, my favorite. Can I promise you if, what you want me to promise you, Jewel? I make no promises that I'm going to promise anything, but I'll see what it is. Look, it's Monkey Boy! Is a monkey. Uh, that's about it. So this is Fiona. Morning, Fiona. Good morning, darling. You're up early. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. Are you feeling all right? You look a little pale. Oh yes, please, please avoid spoiling anything. 
I like I I have come to realize that a lot of people in chat have played this game. I haven't, so I don't know what part is going to be hard. So yeah, please don't. I had a bad nightmare. Again? Well, you're not the only one, darling. Mickey woke me up screaming in the middle of the night. She wouldn't go back to sleep until I made her a cup of herbal tea. Nightmares? Apparently. But she refuses to tell me what they were. I think she's embarrassed. That doesn't sound like Mickey. I know, darling. Don't tell her I said so. But I've never seen her so agitated in my life. She scared the hell out of me. I don't know why I have nightmares. I guess they could be stress-related. After all, the exhibition's right around the corner. Oh, yes. The school exhibition. How's that going? God, don't ask. I have no idea how I'm going to finish my painting on time. I haven't felt inspired in ages. I think you work too hard, darling. You need to relax once in a while. Live. Enjoy your youth. There's inspiration to be found in hedonism, you know. Hedonism. No, I don't know, but apparently you do. <laughs> I'm an authority on the subject, darling. Ask Mickey. She'll tell you I don't lift a finger around the place unless I absolutely have to. Uh... Where's everybody this morning? Mickey's tied up in the basement. Oh, whoa. Oh. Mind you, she's not literally tied up, oh, of course. Okay. Although, that is a tempting thought. Are you getting into your sexual okay. fantasies here, Fiona? Because it's a little too early in the morning for that, don't you think? Sorry, I just can't help myself. Hydration achieved. Anyway, the plumbing is... You probably noticed when you took a shower, yeah? There's no hot water. So Mickey's working on that. Getting knee-deep in putrid canal water is her job. Thank God. What about Charlie? He up yet? I'll stretch while No, this is he's happening. still sleeping. And Emma just went to bed. I saw her come in when I was making breakfast. Do you know who she's seeing now? I don't know. Some guy? Those lads I see her with, darling. She's too good for those assholes. I wish she'd find herself a man who'd treat her right for once. She hasn't had much luck with love, no? She's a magnet for creeps. And she's so pretty. They prey on her, you know, bastards. I've tried to talk to her about it, but Emma's impulsive. She doesn't listen. She's just as headstrong as you and me, darling. But I'm sure she'll be all right. She's smart and resourceful, and not afraid to speak up for herself. I also did stretching and actually had good posture to begin with, so, for once. Shouldn't you be outside enjoying the good weather? You joking? Bollocks to that. I'll stay inside until September, thank you very much. It's too bloody hot. Wake me up when September ends. Can I ask you a few questions? Why, certainly, darling. About what? You're doing all right there. You're kind of, uh, kind of convulsing there for a second. Tell me about Emma. Emma? Why, she's your best friend, darling. I don't know what to tell you that you don't already know. You girls are so close. That's true. The day we met, we clicked instantly. It was strange, but cool. Like me and Mickey, then? Except for the sex, of course. That's a pretty big except for Fiona. Oh, I guess so. She's the crazy one, Emma is. Not crazy as in mad as a hatter, but crazy in a good way. Fun to be around. Emma's always been a little weird. Exactly, darling. She's a flirt, too, and the boys seem to drop like flies at her feet. No wonder. She's a real looker, I don't have to tell you. I'm sure she could have been a model if she'd wanted, but she's an artist, and a good one, too. I really think she'll be a successful artist. Her sculptures are getting a lot of attention. Um... Well, let's, let's keep on the subject of our best friend that we should know everything about. Anything else you can tell me about Emma? She ought to be a little more careful sometimes. She's a flirt. 
and although she doesn't mean any harm, some lads don't take too well to being teased and rejected. You should tell her that, though, being her best friend and all. I have told her. She won't listen. No. She does worry me a little, but she's a big girl and she can take care of herself. I'm certainly happy to have her living here. Next to you and Charlie, she's my favourite tenant. Oh wow, there's a lot of questions we can ask. I didn't realize how long this list is. But you know what? You, you know what I like to do with is like with games like the Zero Escape series and especially with uh Somnium Files, we get the flavor text because it's it's a big part of the game. What did you think of me when we first met? That's a peculiar question, isn't it? I thought you were quite lovely. I still do, darling. Do you remember the day I arrived? Of course, darling. It wasn't that long ago, and I'm not senile quite yet. It was in May, wasn't it? Charlie referred you to me, and you were quite at a loss. First day in the city, wasn't it? I remember. You looked like a lost puppy. Puppy? Me? When I saw you lugging that suitcase across the bridge, my heart went out to you. I'm glad you came here. You could have been lost anywhere else. How long have you known Charlie? Oh, he's one of our oldest tenants. It's close to three years, I believe, since he moved in. Charlie is always in a good mood, and he's such a gentleman. I agree. He's an actual, genuine gentleman. And you don't see a lot of gentlemen these days, trust me. You have a very good friend in him, darling. Perhaps even more than a friend. What do you mean, more than a friend? I Not mean, for me to say, on. darling. If you don't realize it yet, you will. And everyone knows, a good gentleman never leaves a puzzle unsolved. I, I don't think he's that kind of gentleman. Unless we're... Well, there's going to be a lot of puzzles here. I don't know how many Charlie is going to be solving. Let's, uh... Let's uh, deal with Zach. What's up with Zach Lee? Zach? I think we both feel the same way about him, darling. He's not actually a bastard. If he was, I'd have had him out of here in an instant. But he is an ass and a stuck-up, pompous, arrogant wanker. My thoughts, wanker. exactly. Aside from that wanker bit. Still, he pays his rent on time and he doesn't make a lot of noise. He keeps to himself. And most importantly, he's shit scared of me. So I can't just kick him out. You know what, Fiona? You're alright. Tell me a little bit about yourself, Fiona. Me? Why? It's not much to say, darling. I love my job. I love Venice. And I love being with Mickey. I'm a happy girl. Sure, sometimes I wish I could go back to England to see my family, but that's water under the bridge, so to speak. I'm very happy with myself and my life here in Newport. How long have you and Mickey been together? Mickey and I have been together since I was 19. She was in her late 30s then. The older, wiser, worldly woman. I found her sweet and charming and intriguing. When I finally realized she was neither of those things, it was too late. <laughs> I was in love. She stole me away from my dreary British inner city life, and she brought me here. She was no knight in shining armor, that's for sure. But she knew how to treat me like a woman. You guys make a great couple. You think so, darling? Yes, I guess we do. And the sex is amazing. You never get tired of talking <sighs> about your sex life, do you? Never, and if I ever do, please shoot me. Oh, hi, Fiona. How's your sex life? Uh, alright. Well, thanks, uh... Thanks, Jewel. And thanks for dropping by. Uh, border house. Can you tell me something about the border house? Is this where we're living? That's one of my favorite topics, darling. What precisely do you want to know? Oh geez, there's a sub menu for this. What the hell? What made you decide to run a boarding house? 
That's a long story. One of the reasons Mickey and I got together was that we shared a passion for the classic English country inns. You know, quaint, weathered buildings, funny old ladies, and oddly suggestive names like the Lazy Cock. <laughs> so why come here to the big city? To America? We wanted to create a place with a similar atmosphere and hospitality here in Newport. Like a safe house for people like you and I to call home, if only for a short while. So we discussed different options for a few months, and then we decided we wanted to start a boarding house for young, penniless students and artists. You decided you wanted to do that here in Venice? We knew that Venice was the place for us long before we came here, but the hard part was finding a building cheap enough. And this building was available? Not at first. Like most of the buildings in Venice, this one used to be a factory. But when we first looked at it, a local company was planning to turn it into a bar and nightclub. It was so perfect for our purposes, though, that we appealed to the Venice Borough Council. And after outlining our plans, they gave us the go-ahead at a reduced price, provided we kept our promises regarding our tenants. Wait, so I'm confused. Are we in Italy or are we in the U.S.? And if we're in the U.S., then where is Venice? Like, I am so confused. What inspired the name Border House? That came quite naturally when we saw the place. It's on the border between two worlds, isn't it? Between Venice and the city itself. And at the same time, I also believe we're on the border between two more abstract worlds. Between art and spirit on the one hand, and science and technology on the other. That's very poetic, Fiona. Yes, I've practiced. I may be an inner city girl, but I can philosophize and bullshit with the best of them. <laughs> Do you and Mickey own the place together? We own it together, yes. And we've shared the responsibilities between us. Mickey takes care of the maintenance of the building, and I busy myself with the administrative tasks. I also take care of the day-to-day -day management of our tenants, like deciding whether or not to let someone rent a room. And, of course, the unpleasant business of booting someone out. I thought you enjoyed that part. Yes, all right. In some cases I do, but not always. It can get quite messy. Thanks for the information. I'm glad I could help you out, darling. So there is a Venice neighborhood in Los Angeles, and is it flooded like Venice Italy is? Tell me some more about the border house. What precisely do you want to know? Thanks for the information. Good talk. I'm glad I could help you out, darling. All right. They, they forgot to take this option out of the list. What can you tell me about Venice? I don't really know much about the history of Venice. You should really ask someone with an interest in local affairs. What I do know is that this whole neighborhood used to be an industrial area, and that about 100 years ago they converted most of the buildings into residences for students and the homeless. And it's a nice place to live, certainly. Friendly people, liberal attitudes, great clothing stores, quite perfect, aside from that dreadful stench from the canals in the summertime. What's the story behind my apartment? Your apartment? It's more a room than anything else. Not much more than a large closet, really. Damn. It's not that small. It's one of our smallest rooms, but it's cheap and it's on a nice floor. I hope you're happy there. I like it. It's convenient. And it's got a... an interesting view. That's nice to hear, darling. As for the story behind it, no unexplained deaths or hidden pirate treasures, I'm afraid. Just a long string of students on a tight budget. Do you like Newport? The city? Well, I stay in Venice most of the time. It's easy to forget we're just a tiny little pocket in the middle of a sprawling urban wasteland. But do I like it? I think Newport is one of the great cities of our age. Love it or hate it, you can't argue with that. And which one is it? Love or hate? I haven't decided yet, darling. 
Ask me again in another 15 years. Perhaps I'll have an answer then. <laughs> I don't have any more questions right now. Don't hesitate asking if there's something else you want to know. I'd better get going. Off to school. Yeah, there are no more classes this semester, but I have to finish my painting by next Thursday. For what it's worth, darling, good luck. And don't work too hard, all right? Big stretch. Um... By the way... I saw this note on the corkboard. I think the ring might belong to me. I'm sorry I have to ask, but could you describe the ring? Sure thing. It says Sweet Sixteen. My dad gave it to me. I think it was the only birthday of mine he remembered, or at least acknowledged. Damn. Yes, that's the one. I found it under the sofa when I was vacuuming. Here you are, darling. Thanks. It's not worth much, but it's got a certain sentimental value for me. It's a very pretty ring. Yeah, yeah it is. My dad never gave me anything pretty before or since. He must have won a poker game or something that day. <sighs> you know what's strange? I don't hate him. He's a bastard and he treated me like crap almost every single day of my life. But I don't hate him. I feel sorry for him. Why? Because he doesn't know how to love. He can't love anybody or anything. And because he'll be miserable every second of every minute of every day until the day he dies. Damn. God, I'm glad that life is behind me. I hope I never have to see him again. No, that doesn't sound right. I've made a choice not to see him again. Ever. Okie dokie. But yet you keep the ring. Dad gave me this gold ring on my 16th birthday. It's probably significant because we have it. It's a matchbook. Good talk. Sometimes there's just not anything to add to that. It's a chair. Emma picked this table up at a flea market for $10 last month. That's $9 more than it's worth. I feel like Fiona's just like, who are you talking to? The omnipresent screen. I don't pretend to know how it works, but all the data apparently passes through tiny little black holes in the fabric of our dimension. Yeah. You know, that really freaks me out when I think about it. It, when is this happening? That's another question. Shelves. Good job. Um. We have a nice view of the bridges from this window. That's the front door. More shelves. Uh. I don't think there's anything else to... They really, really knew how to design tacky furniture back in the late 22nd century. Okay, well that gives us more of an idea. For probably sometime in the, in the 23rd century. Or maybe 24th. And here we are outside. The alarm is active, but it can't be very effective with the doors wide open like that. Still, there's always somebody around, so I guess we're safe. Oh dear. Whoops! Was that me? I mean, yes. Obviously. I love this mural. Even though the motif is a little trite. I mean, Fairy tale forests and magical dragons? Still, it's pretty. I wonder what happened to the artist. Probably making a bundle from cheesy fantasy calendars and book covers. 23rd century, west coast of North America, so maybe not LA anymore. 
Maybe it's in LA. New Los Angeles. No wait, that's a different game. Hey, wow! I can see right into the common room. That's amazing. <laughs> the snark on this girl. The shades are drawn. But who's this Cortez guy? That's Cortez. He sits in the same spot almost every day. I hate to admit it, but he scares me a little. Double clicking does run. Oye, señorita. Yes? How are you this morning, señorita bonita? Busy. I see. Everyone's busy today. You have a big show coming up soon, yes? That's right. Gotta run. I'll see you around. Sunshine and pretty senoritas give an old man like me the blues. I like my days cold and rainy. In fact, I think I prefer the world to be in black and white. Like an old movie. Like all good movies. But tell me, Senorita Ryan, how would you describe your perfect day? Uh... uh. Hot and sunny like this one. Well then, you should be happy to be alive today, yes? It is a perfect day. But you are not happy, are you? You are troubled by nightmares. Excuse me, what? what? You are how afraid you know of that? them. You even fear your dreams may be real. Who told you about my nightmares? No one. I can tell from looking into your eyes. I see the ghosts that haunt you. I don't know who you've been talking to, but from now on, stay the hell away from me in my personal life. No puedo, señorita Ryan. You have a destiny. Destiny? I don't care what you think. Just, just leave me alone. If you don't face them, I'm afraid your nightmares will continue. Soon they will appear to you even when you're awake. You need some serious help, you know that? We all do, April. That's the reason we are here, you and me. That's it. I don't have to listen to this. Perdóname. I've upset you. We didn't think you'd react this way. I me? hope we can talk again soon. I don't think so, no. Please. Think about it. And senorita, cuidado. Be careful. So that was weird. Uh, let's, uh, let's to the bridges here. From what I've been told, the clock stopped on the very day of the infamous Venice Massacre in 2109, to the minute the police opened fire on the squatters. World building happening here. Who are you? Yeah, just some random dude just going about his day. That's perfectly fine. Uh, just a wooden bench. Okay, we're sitting down. And then... Good talk. Um... Seems to be my line for this game already. Just good talk all around. Not a whole lot that I can interact with. I think it's just to the park, really. Or to the subway. Old iron thing. I can't even begin to guess what that's supposed to be. Hmm. 
Those freight trains pass by at least once every five minutes all day long. You get used to it, though, eventually. Actually, the music here is a bit loud, isn't it? Um, but I turn the music right down. I don't know. I don't know if. Uh, I turn it down a little more, but I also don't want it to be completely inaudible. This guy's out here all day long, all year. He never stops painting. Ever. And I doubt he's ever finished even one painting. At least it's easy to get into the uh, the options screen from anywhere. Also, I wonder if that wasn't like... Hang on. That might not have been the music. That might have been like... Yeah, let's try that. I, I basically just want to make sure that the voice is more audible. Wow, that wasn't five minutes at all. Very cubist, and not my style at all. Well, that's the subway. That's the academy. Time moves fast in the future. Yeah, I think we're going to the Academy, right? So obviously, let's take every path but the Academy. Homeless dude. Alright. Yeah, thanks for telling me for about double-clicking, by the way. It's a plaque commemorating the Venice Massacre of 2109. It reads, In honor of those who died defending our right to live. East Venice. There are, I think, three subway stops in Venice, including this one. Newport Transit System. It's not one system anymore, though. All the different lines are owned by different companies. This is the Metro Line, and I believe it's run by Vocamba Mercer. I wonder if that's going to be relevant at all. The bridges, the park, also I wonder guy. what the homeless people do in the wintertime. Supposedly, it gets biting cold here in Newport, and I don't know if there are any shelters anymore. Hmm. I guess we could go down to the subway, but I don't think we're going to be able to do anything there, seeing as we're basically broke. Let's just go to the academy. Bishop and Anne-Marie. It's the official VAVA notice board. Only registered students are allowed to put notices up here. The Venice Academy of the Visual Arts. World-renowned, prestigious, expensive, and my future alma mater, if all goes well with the exhibition and I get my grant, that is. I feel like some, some education grants are basically just, like, we're, we're going to fund part of your education on the basis that you don't really need it. And you're just here for your piece of paper. Bishop and Anne Marie. He's a photography student. She's in my life study class. Nice couple. No, I've got too much to do right now. Okay then. That's Mary Sam, Vava's founding mother and pro Venice activist back before the riots. She was assassinated by a corporate hired gun right after the school opened some 90 years ago. Damn. Mm -hmm. 
somebody's thrown away a rubber glove. Well, obviously we're gonna take that, right? Why would somebody toss out a perfectly good work glove with just one big hole in it? What Gee, a terrible, terrible waste. It's a rubber glove, but it's pretty useless with that big hole in it. So did I take a close look at it's the It's a matchbook from the Fringe Cafe. Alright. Olaf's on a roll. Again. Does that guy ever run out of inspiration or energy? Must be the cold Norwegian winters. Nothing else to do but paint. Yeah, because, you know, TV doesn't exist. Or the internet. And the, the internet was definitely a thing in 1999 that they could have, you know, played on. Also, yeah, the whole pyramid boobs thing. I'm definitely noticing it now. Hey, Olaf. Don't want to disturb him. Bye, Olaf. Art books. There's a really nice one here on Turner. I love his landscapes. Nice. Very Van Goghish, with just a hint of Munk. It's empty. Uh, it doesn't look like there's anything else here, so let's go upstairs. Emma's really good with the Hala sculptor, and her imagination is so vivid. Good thing we're best friends, or I might be jealous. Look at all these polygons! Wow! These sinks are as old as the building itself, but at least they've been renovated quite recently. Some books on color, composition, and... duck hunting? Hmm. <sighs> I can only think of two things more depressing than a blank canvas. Death and taxes. Both of which are inevitabilities. I'm way past finger painting. I need a paintbrush and palette. Well, as it turns out... Also, don't knock finger painting. There's some pretty cool things that can come out of that. Uh, Acrylic let's... and oil paints. Those sketchbooks belong to some of the other students who share the space. Is there anything else? Mm, doesn't look like it. So. Oh. My paintbrush and palette. What more could a girl need? Maybe a blank canvas? Handsome nude model and six hours of uninterrupted painting. <laughs> and start to see why this is a mature rated game. Let's get Peyton. Hiya. Emma? Hi! I didn't expect to see you here today. Me neither. Are you busy? Nah. Well, I am. But I was about to wrap up for today anyway. Why? What's going on? I have an important message for you. From whom? Yeah, from whom? Believe it or not, girlfriend, but it's from Cortez. Oh boy. Excuse me? He said to tell you that he wants to meet you, these are his exact words, where children visualize their dreams. Visualize dreams? What's that supposed to mean? Me? I was hoping you would know. 
Did he say anything else? No, nope, that was it. Why does he want to meet you? Oh, don't tell me. You guys are having a secret love affair. No? Oh, yeah. We're eloping and flying to Africa tonight. It's all been happening so fast. My heart's a flutter. <laughs> <sighs> How romantic. I couldn't imagine a better catch than Senor Cortez, the Latin lover. <laughs> Did he talk to you about nightmares? No. Why? I don't know. It's just... My dreams are really starting to bother me. There you go again with dreams. You're obsessing, April. They're just dreams. Sometimes a banana is just a banana. Cigar. Cigar? What do you mean, cigar? Sometimes a cigar is just a cigar, not a banana. Whatever. The point is, you're reading too much into your dreams. I'm sure they're perfectly logical. Even a talking dragon? Is a talking dragon logical? Especially a talking... dragon? You had a dream about a dragon? Okay, that's not logical. That's just silly. Still, this ought to be interesting. Go on. Well, there was a dragon. No kidding. I think we established that already. You <laughs> had a dream about a dragon. Not just any dragon, though. A talking dragon. I'll say talk to the trees. Yep, we've been through that. Talking dragon covered. What did it say? She. It was a she, a female dragon. What, you could tell from the skirt, high heels, and lipstick? Don't mock me, Emma. She said something to me. Something about being the mother of the future. She probably said time to get up and go to school, April. If you don't want to take my dreams seriously, I'll just stop telling you about them. Is that a promise? Oh, jeez. Like you're in any position to make fun of my dreams? Have you looked at your sculptures lately? Oh, that's low. I'd punch you out if I wasn't so hungry. You want to go get some lunch at the Fringe? And then I could punch you out. I'll drop by after I clean up around here. I'll be there for a while, so bye. This is our best friend? I'm, I'm kind of... I'm kind of... Mm. A bit ambivalent about her. Who is the plot and who is the backstory? Who's there? Oh, goodness. Okay, that was not a dream, I think. So, she is the plot, and this thing is the backstory, I think. At the very least, that was weird. Um, I guess let's, uh... <laughs> why, did, why did April just kind of do a spinny up there? Nice. Very Van Goghish. With just a hint of Monk. Good. I'm glad that hasn't changed in the last six hours. That's another one of Olaf's. I swear he does a painting in, like, a day. That's pretty damn good, too. I mean, there are some people who are able to make a painting in, like, 20 minutes. The whole show called The Joy of Painting, you know? Wet on wet and all that. Um, nice hair you. color. Nice hair color. I mean, yeah, that's that's a nice hair color. You're not wrong. Uh, where are we going? The annual VAVA Summer Exhibit, August 11th through 18th. Oh, God, I'm actually expected to be ready by then. Beating the devils out of paintbrushes. Tuck -a -tuck -a -tuck. It's like, oh, you're using my show as ASMR? Well, screw you, buddy. Tuck -a -tuck -a -tuck. Uh, 
Um, wait, there was like a controls reference on the. Uh, You open the scum VM uh, wiki here, because there's like... Okay, so if I press F5, I should get April's diary. Nothing, okay. That is save game, okay. And uh, scum VM gives us an autosave every five minutes. Conversation log. Well, that's just neat. All right, so we need to go to the fringe, is what I understand here. Um, I have no idea where the fringe is. So, X is display exits. Okay. To the academy, to the subway, to the bridge. Save in one, then in two, then in one and two before a dungeon, then two in the dungeon, three somewhere before the boss. <laughs> and forget which save you used last and the wrong one. I mean, at least that actually tells me when the save was made, so hopefully that problem won't, uh, won't be a thing. And control F5 is the scum VM menu. Um, battery menu? Oh, that's just the, um, that's just the main, the actual game menu. I wasn't exactly saying that the Steam version doesn't work, just that um, it showed up in a 640x480 exclusive full screen window, which um, basically makes it so that I can't use the rest of my computer. Uh, to the bridges, subway. Uh-oh. I have to get scanned. Jumping gates in the Newport subway is a corporate offense liable to get me five years behind bars, if I'm lucky. That seems incredibly unnecessary. What, what dystopian future are we living in? What the crap? The gates scan everybody who goes in and out of the station and compares their genetic signature with the database. If you haven't paid your fare, the alarm goes off and the cops show up. That's gross. I hate this. Um, exit please. Thank you. Ah, to the cafe. That's probably where I need to go. Skaters. Man, those guys are in trouble. Don't they know that skateboarding is strictly prohibited in Newport? They got freaking 10 years to life. Man, those guys are in trouble. Don't they know that skateboarding is strictly prohibited in Newport? Good talk. Um, how the hell are you supposed to see that red arrow door? I mean, it's not any worse than just not having the symbols. So I found the button so that the so that the symbols show up at least. You played half the game before you figure out there's a button to show up. That's oh. Yeah, fortunately, I looked this up on the uh, on the uh, Scum VM wiki. So there's 
a full reference of what all the keys do. Seven life sentences, ten lethal, ten lethal injections, five decades of familial shaming. Oh dear. I don't think I've ever seen anybody pass through that door. Isn't that peculiar? And if I was Nancy Drew, I might actually care. Not paid enough to care. Rusty pipes. They're hundreds of years old, installed way back when Venice was an industrial area. See? I know some local history. Good job. The Fringe Cafe, my home away from home. I really don't mind working there. It's a nice place. I mean, it ranks nice on a scale from begging for food at the bottom to just scraping by at the top. I do not intend to make a career of it. I think people should have the good sense to do that kind of stuff behind closed doors. At least as long as I don't have a boyfriend. I, uh, I can understand that feeling. It amazes me why backpackers flock to Newport. You'd think they'd have the good sense to stick to India, Australia, and the near-Earth colonies. I mean, what, where there are opportunities to see something new, someone's gonna be there. Um... Did that say Death Star or what? Can you say Death Star? I just did. Death Star. If I turn that wheel, would the drain pipes of the universe open up and swallow all solid matter? It could happen. Um, I think that's about it. You a good job of making a living, breathing world. Yeah, that, that, there is a lot to experience here. Although I, I feel like there's a lot that uh, we're not really getting into right away. But like, it it's not like someone who lives in the world is going to have the sense to kind of talk to some omniscient presence that's watching them and like explain every little thing. Complimentary candy for paying customers only. Stan has a habit of taking it out of your salary if you, um, get the munchies. I mean, how, like how expensive could those be? Like five cents each? Buy them in bulk? Hey, Charlie. That's my good friend, Charlie. He was the first person I met when I came to Venice and I love him dearly. As a friend. Uh, this is not PS1. This, yeah, this is a Windows game. Smoother than Final Fantasy stuff. I also have the anti-aliasing um, settings in Scum VM turned up. Yes. Scum VM, as you can see. That's Charlie. That is Charlie. Hey there, Charlie. Watch out, you're gonna hurt a guy. Hi, Charlie. April. Nice to see you, girl. You know, I came to wake you this morning, but you'd already left. Early bird catches the worm. No, early bird finishes the damn painting on time. <laughs> you cut yourself on the polygons in the OG. Have you seen Cortez around? As a matter of fact, I have. And he was asking for you. Do you have any idea where kids would be able to, um, visualize their dreams? Maybe in therapy? Hmm. I don't think that's it, Charlie. Then I don't know. He asked about me? Yeah, where you were. He had a message for you. I told him to give it to Emma. That she would be more likely to bump into you. I got it, but I have no idea what it means. Cortez can be a little strange. A little? Do you know where he was going? No, but he seemed interested in that poster next to the jukebox. They put it up earlier today. What poster did you say he was interested in? 
The one right next to the jukebox. Thanks. Anytime, April. How's work going today? Aside from the trouble with the plumbing, everything's been peaceful. Emma's here with Marcus and Isabel. Other than that, I mean, it's been a quiet morning. Everyone must be home out of the sun, yeah? Or on holiday. Perfect time for it, too. The city's just boiling in July, and it gets even hotter in August. You should have stayed out in the country until the autumn, girl. It's cooler out there, yeah? Also, I just noticed that uh, kids visualize their dreams with Mario Paint. I mean, yeah, you're, uh, you're not wrong about that. Although I spent a lot of my time in, Mar in uh, Mario Paint um, reenacting the, uh, the attract demos. I think I prefer this heat to the heat I got at home. You're safe now, yeah? We take care of you, April. You do. I'm lucky. It's not luck. You're a good person. And you deserve good friends. You help me out when I'm in a state, yeah? You're always in a good mood, Charlie. Yeah, but you never know. You're there if I ever need you. I know that. You doing anything special tonight? Working. I should really be at rehearsal, but I need the money. I'm going home for a week before school starts in September. Right, you told me. Well, that's great. It's been years since your last trip home, right? Yeah, right. You remember well, girl. Four years. My father and I, well, we haven't been on good terms since I left. I know how that feels. Isn't it such a cliche, though? I don't look forward to seeing him again, but it will be nice to be back with the rest of the family, especially my sisters, you know, and my mom. Mind if I ask you a few questions, Charlie? Why would I mind, girl? I thought you were having like a stroke or something for a second there, J-Pop. What's your take on Cortez? Why do you want to talk about Cortez? I don't know him that well. He's been around for as long as I can remember, but I really never talked to the man. Do you think he's as crazy as some people say? No, he's not crazy. Just a little eccentric. He doesn't give a donkey's ass what people think or say about him. And that's cool. I don't know. I have a feeling there's a lot more to Cortez than what he wants us to believe. That man has had an eventful life, I'm sure. He does not give the ass of an ass. Anything else that comes to mind about Cortez? What else? I don't know what to tell you, girl. When he's not talking about books, he talks about old movies. He loves the classics, calls them real art. Actually, Alexandra, I, I will believe that. Like, I never really understood what, uh, what they were saying, but it kind of makes sense that they would be saying, Mario Paint. Ooh, ah. um. What was it about me that made you want to be my friend, Charlie? Everything, girl. You're a sweet peach. <laughs> no, it's true. I liked you from the very beginning. When you first came into the cafe with a suitcase in each hand, lost and bewildered. God, thanks for reminding me. I was such a country bumpkin. No, everyone who comes to Venice looks like that, girl. This is the village of the damned, don't you know? Are we in hell? Are we dead? How long have you known Emma? I met Emma about a year ago when she started studying at Vava. She moved into the room just opposite mine, and we became friends almost immediately. I like her a lot, and the two of you are the best friends I've ever had. Thanks, Charlie. The same goes for me. Did you ever tell Emma that? Yeah, I told her and she jokes about it. That's just Emma. I know she appreciates me telling her, though. Does Emma's behavior ever worry you? She can seem a little out of control from time to time. 
but she's smarter than people give her credit for. I think she's able to take good care of herself. She's a brilliant artist. Her sculptures are inventive and beautiful. I know. Sometimes I'm in awe. They just don't seem to match her personality. She's a deep person, but she hides it well. She's more comfortable being a ditzy teenager than a professional artist. But around the two of us, sometimes she lets the disguise drop. I love her when she does that. Do you like living in Venice? I love Venice. I've been here three years now, and I haven't grown tired of it yet. I don't know if I ever will. Venice is like a college campus. There are so many young people here from all over the world. And the mix of nationalities and ideologies and ethnicities is refreshing and inspiring. The fact that we're also right in the middle of one of the great cities on Earth is just a bonus. Call Newport whatever you want. At least it's alive, and there's always something going on. Yeah, Venice is my kind of place, and I'm not planning on leaving anytime soon. At least not as long as all my friends are living here. Why pick it up for $15 when you can door dash it for 30 What about you, Charlie? What about me? Yeah? When was the last time you talked about yourself? I don't talk about myself, girl. You know that. Still, I'd like to talk about you for a bit. If you want, just in general, or is there anything in particular you want to know? So, Foos. Zero, I've played this, right? How, how do you... How do you... I'm sorry that I have to laugh at that. I've played this, right? I mean, you've played this. Uh, anyway, I, I just thought that was very silly, but uh, let's move on with the game. What's your biggest dream? A dark stage, a packed auditorium, and a single spotlight. Dancing, girl, don't you know? I'm a good dancer, but I need to be among the best to make it out in the real world. So I'll keep studying and I'll keep working as a waiter to support my studies, just like you. Inhaling pizza. What are you, Kirby? How did you end up in Venice? At home, there wasn't much professional training available for dancers. And my father, he was not happy about my choice of career. He wanted me to work in the factories like him and his father. That's gross. Out here in Venice, everyone's got their own dreams. And people are supportive of each other no matter how crazy those dreams might be. Your dream isn't crazy at all, Charlie. You're already halfway there. Wow. But I still have a long way to go. You're right, girl. I can make it if I work hard enough. So can you. Because we're both just so damn talented. <laughs> Are you happy working here at the cafe? We make decent money, if that's what you mean. I don't want to be a bartender for the rest of my life, obviously. But yeah, I'm happy I have a job. And you work here too, so I get to hang out with my friend, right? If it wasn't for that, I don't know if I'd be able to do it. Hard work and lousy pay. The hours are flexible, and like you said, I get to hang out with you and my other friends. That's all I wanted to know, Charlie. Okay. Thanks, Charlie. I have to get going, Charlie. Take care, all right? Remember, you're supposed to get paid today. Stan's not going to remember unless you bug him about it. That's, uh, that's some very poor management, if that's the case. Also, I just had to say goodbye to Charlie three times in a row in order to end the conversation. What the hell? Hi. I like my outfit. It's inexpensive, but cool. I, I don't know that uh, you're supposed to quite be... Charlie, get out of the way. There's an exit over there. <laughs> it's 
Stan, né? My boss Stan. A hard man with a soft. Nah. He's just a callous bastard. I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> uh, I know that. <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh... When she's not working or out on a date, Emma's always hanging out here. Just like me, really. Just like all of us. That's my... Well, Emma's friend, really, Marcus. He's a Vava student as well. Tom's Follies. Okay. Um, also, I think this is the poster that uh, Cortez was uh, looking at, wasn't it? Roma Gallery presents Growing Pains, an exhibition by and for kids and teenagers. Could this be what Cortez was talking about? Where kids visualize their dreams? I think this may be it. Where's the Roma Gallery located? I never say no to a complimentary ticket. It's a poster ad for an exhibition called Growing Pains at the Roma Gallery. It's the address the gallery is located near the Watertown Bridge. It's all the way over in West Venice, if I remember correctly. I'm gonna have to catch the Metro Line subway to get there. Also, what is the deal with the music here? My boss, Stan. My boss, Stan, he hears my soliloquies, so I shouldn't say anything more. What you doing here? I... You ain't working this afternoon, are you? I don't want my employees work 24 hours a day. Go, get sleep. But I'm just... Damn, woman, do I have to babysit you? It's nice to see you too, Stanley. No, I'm not working today. I just came by to... Oh, don't ever say those two words when I'm around. I don't think my horse can take it. You and nice? That's funny. No, working and not. Don't use those two words in the same sentence. Damn, I get creeps even when I say them. This guy is kind of like, for for some reason, I, the way that he's talking gives me strong bad vibes. What I'm trying to say. I thought you'd be ecstatic to have people work 24-hour shifts. Oh, don't get me wrong, sweetheart. There's nothing I'd want more. But you see, for some weird reason, it is illegal to make people work that long. <laughs> What a downer. For some weird reason. Yeah, I'd make you guys work triple shifts if I could. Nah, I don't think you would. I think you're a real angel at heart, Stanley. You're just afraid people will find out. Yeah, yeah, I'm a real goddamn sweetheart. Go on, take advantage of my kindness while I'm still out of my head. I'd like to get paid. Damn woman, don't you know I got a migraine already? Paid? God damn it. Why'd they have to make that word sound so obscene? Listen, why don't you leave old Stan alone, huh? They make me feel a whole hell of a lot better. Choo, choo, be good little girl, hmm? Yeah, uh, no. Uh, you see, the way that I deal with capitalists is I ask them to give me money. I'd still like to get paid, though. Mighty man, our woman. You really know how to rub it in. God damn it. Yeah, all right. You got your timesheet? Yes. Yes? Yes? Let's see it. God damn, you think I'm going to take your word for a woman? 
Okay, so I have to find my timesheet then? Emma, do you know where my timesheet is? Settle this one for us, April. When did Roin Dale release Sidetracked? 04, right after the Morning Star exile, those sons of bitches. With blood on their boots, yeah. <laughs> Told you so, Marcus. You said 03. I was closer than you. 07, and you call yourself a fan. I don't. <sighs> did you speak with Zach today? Why? He was upset. Called you a stuck-up bitch. He what? You gotta be kidding me. I wasn't even that rude to him. He thinks so. So that even if you came crawling to his door, he wouldn't give you the time of day. Said you called him an asshole. Oh, God. I really don't know when to shut my mouth, do I? Who cares? It's Zack. He hates you, so what? No great loss. That's true. So, what else is going on? What are you doing this afternoon? <laughs> I mean, he, Zach had to hear it, right? Actually, I came by to see if I could find Cortez. What's with you and this guy? You'd rather spend time with him than us? I have to find out what the message means. Don't look at me. I don't know anything except what I already told you. Ask Charlie, he spoke with Cortez earlier. What are you doing? Staying here. What else? I'm meeting a friend later, but that's not until 9. We're waiting for Isabel and then we're gonna eat. But I guess you're not hungry. No. Figures. I don't know why I even bother asking. Who's this friend you're meeting later? Don't tell me it's that guy you were out with last night. Are you gonna tell me I shouldn't get involved with men like him? No, no, of course not. I'm not your... You don't need me to tell you that, Emma. Well, I wish you would, because you're right. I shouldn't, he's a bastard. But he's so cute and charming and, you know, very good in bed. I, I just can't help myself. But he's not a keeper, don't worry about that. It's just this thing, just a fling. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sure that's gonna end well. Mind if I ask you some questions, Emma? Like, I don't tell you everything that's going on anyway? Of course you can ask me questions. Like, duh. What's your... Um... Uh, take on Cortez? My take on Cortez? What's that? Like a diplomatic way of saying what the F is this guy's glitch? <laughs> sure. Let's go with that one. You know, I think Cortez is a barrel of laughs. In a good way. Everybody thinks they got him all figured out, you know? Like he's the resident weirdo. But I know that just ain't true. I've talked with Cortez, and the guy is brilliant. He's weird, yeah, and he's up in the clouds, and I think he believes in aliens, which is cool, but girl, he's smart. I mean, I'm not talking professor smart here. I'm talking real life, seen it all, been there, done that, smart, useful smart, experienced smart. And, oh, I gotta tell you, the guy's cultured. Ask him about anything, art, music, movies, books, he's current on most topics which scares me, because it seems he's always just, I don't know, hanging around doing nothing. He rarely goes anywhere. And it's like he's waiting for something. Or someone. Yeah, maybe Jerry Garcia. <laughs> You're bad. No, I don't think he's a doper. I mean, listen to the guy. What he says may sound a little out there, but the way he says it... No, he's not on Amethyst, that's for sure. And one more thing. He is cute. He's what? Cute. Emma, he's like 60. Did you ever see his eyes? Those are not the eyes of an old man. And so what if he's 60? He's better looking than most of the guys I date and so much nicer. Then I think you've been swimming in the shallow end of the gene pool for too long, Emma. I mean, come on, a 60-year-old screwball with a ponytail and an exotic accent? Hello? Well, we'll see. Okay. Hmm. I have questions that I don't think are going to be answered anytime soon. Did you speak with Charlie today? Yeah, for a few minutes. Why? 
Nothing. Just wondered is all. Uh, April, did he say anything to you at all? About what? About... Mm, nothing. I mean, I don't know anything. Which isn't true because I, I don't lie, but he... Ugh, forget it. If we were having this conversation in a movie, I'd be going, like... Shit, girl, get your act together! Open your eyes! But I don't think that's a good idea. Not in real life. Because real life has a nasty habit of hurting people's feelings. Now this is definitely real life. Did you finish your sculpture for the exhibit? Pretty much. I'm happy with it, and I know that if I go back and keep working on it, I'll just kill it. So I think I'll leave it alone. You? You know what? Don't ask. I'm praying it'll finish itself one of these days. Sure. Could happen. It could so happen. But I wouldn't count on it. I'll have it ready in time. Yes, you will, or I'll kick your ass so hard that you'll... Okay, I got it, I got it! Thanks for the inspiration. Thanks, Emma. Thanks for what? For talking to you? Girlfriend, what the hell is the matter with you? Snap out of it! I have the juiciest tidbit of gossip that I can't tell you. Did you finish your sculpture? I have a couple of more questions. Yes, Inspector? That's it. <laughs> I have a couple more questions. Yes, that's it. I feel, I feel like um, there's some bits of programming that might have been needed to uh, not tree into an empty branch. I gotta run. See you around, stranger. Fresh bread. I love the food in this place. We have a great kitchen. Hopefully the bread is free. Marcus. That's his name, don't wear it out. It's a jukebox, according to Stan. It's an original. Almost 200 years old. I don't know. That looks like a replica to me. A good replica, but still. It took some convincing, but Stan finally agreed to put the jukebox on free play. I'll just choose a track at random. Okay, so it seems like we're going to need to, uh, for one thing, figure out where our um, our timesheet is, because one thing's for sure, it ain't here. We do have bread. It's a loaf of freshly baked bread from the cafe. Let's talk to the bread. I'm not particularly hungry. Let's tell her about how not hungry we are. Let's <laughs> chew the track at random. We're no strangers to the. Um, but yeah, we're gonna need to find our time sheet so we can get paid, so we can take the subway, and uh, go try to figure out what it is that. Uh, Cortez wants with us because like the hell is his deal anyway but we're gonna be doing that right after the break so y'all can take a moment uh, get something to drink go to the bathroom if you need to stretch your arms stretch your legs stretch your teeth and in about 10 to 15 minutes we shall continue on this journey which is the longest of its kind I guess I don't really know why it's called the longest journey yet but I'm sure we'll figure it out so, I'll see you in a bit.